All right, cool. Well, I'm going to go there to the big top 10 matchup in the ACC. You don't get a whole lot of those. I'm taking Miami Clemson under 63 and a half. And a lot of this goes to you, Chip, something that you pointed out while we were doing HQ earlier this week in just that the way Dabo Swinney tends to approach these kind of games where he gets more conservative in these big games during the regular season because, as you said, he only cares about winning by one point. He doesn't care about putting on a show or making a point. He's just trying to win the game. And we've seen they get conservative in these type of games. So I think that with this one against the Miami team that has been very good and has looked awesome on offense, and I've said numerous times already that I think might be the second best team in the ACC, I think that they're going to have their hands full and a conservative approach would be the best way to take it. But at the same time, talking about Hurricane Delta, it, it, the rain forecast that was originally in line for this game has kind of abated a bit as the week's gone by. There's supposed to be some light rain, some possible misting, which I can live with. But what's not changing are high winds. So this is somewhat of a wonder situation as well. And I just see that Clemson's offense in the first few games really hasn't looked as sharp outside of Travis Etienne as I think that I was expecting to see coming in the year. I don't know if that's, you know, the receiver situation that nobody's really stepped up to become the alpha guy to help, you know, take take pressure off the others or what but that Clemson offense has looked good but it hasn't really looked like the Clemson offense that we're accustomed to seeing and I think that Miami with its running approach takes a lot of clock off and I also think that Miami's one of their best approaches in this game is going to be to want to keep that Clemson offense off the field so I see we're good I think we're going to see a fun game I think we're going to see a closer game than a lot of people anticipate but I don't think we're going to see a game that features 63 and a half points so I'm going under So Anna Hickey tried to talk me out of this under mm -hmm. like, nah, I, I'm going to see some points. And, and I, I made a more detailed, I wrote a even more detailed breakdown of the game for CBS sports.com in this uh, week's ed edition of the ACC chip shots. And uh, I've got 37, 20. That's my, uh, that's, that's a school. Like I kept running it through in my head and I was like, so Miami's probably going to pop off a couple of explosive plays. And at least, you know, one of them's probably going to get into the end zone. But I do think that there's probably going to be some possessions where they move the ball and then Clemson's defense bows up and forces a field goal. And maybe we see the same situation on the other side where Dabo in this approach is a little bit more willing to be like, no, nah, we'll, we're, we're going to send BT out there, you know, BT Potter. And like, he's just going to go get it done. Maybe a couple field goals from there. So the game as you watch it is going to feel like it's a high scoring game because the ball is going to be moving up and down the field. But I think both of these defenses come up with enough stops in the red zone so that we don't see touchdowns on every red zone appearance. Again, 37, 20. I, I don't hate a Clemson play, but uh, it, at my most potent, I still see the game coming up short of 60. And if you're going to give me 63 and a half, that's uh, that's an advantageous number. So I'll take the under as well. Want to get in on it with you guys and trying to use some discipline here. I like the play. I also like Clemson laying the points too. I just feel like historically Miami, we've been in this spot. I feel like we get excited because of the rankings. We get excited, especially about teams like Miami, like Tennessee, kind of start showing you something you want to talk yourself into. They can hang. I'm not going to touch it. I'm using discipline, but I like the numbers you guys are referencing. I like the under and I like Clemson. I'm just not going to use it for a lock. I think I think I agree. I think Clemson's the right play. Um, maybe I should play it. I don't think I'm going to, but I I, I kind of you want oh, unless you want to do a little Maverick nice man, <laughs> you can talk me into Let's it. Let's go fight if some. We bigs. see some bogus out there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's see. Let's see how the rest of the the All call right. goes here. But I I, I but I'm like the more the closer we've got to it. Um, like I, the more I realize, yeah, I think I'm just talking myself into Miami as like Clemson's Clemson's been here. Like they, they do this. Miami doesn't. Um, but I don't know. Maybe so, I'm just wishful thinking that it'll be a close game. Well, I mean, to Tom's like first point, there have only been in the 50 plus uh, year history of ACC football. There have only been 17 top 10 against top 10 games. And this is the first one that they've had in three years. Mm -hmm. Like it is not, uh, it is all, they have four teams in the top 10 of this week's poll for the first time ever in ACC history. And that's because they get to count Notre Dame. Like we get top 10 against, and this, it, I almost, uh, 
like Danny goes to your point because it's like, if you got more top 10 teams, then top 10 wins become more valuable. And if you lose to a top 10 team, you're not going to fall because heck that was a top 10 team. And so we're going to be in this situation where all of a sudden Miami is, a, is this going to be a, a top 10 loss? Like Miami's not going to fall, but they've got to perform well. And I think that's the interesting part there is that I'm expecting Miami to lose, but how far they fall in the rankings and what that means for the ACC and the rest of the season, whether that Clemson gets another top five uh, top 10 ACC game uh, will, will be determined. But again, it, it blew my mind 17, only 17 in the entire history of the league. And the first one in three years is going to be this weekend. You yeah, know so. what? You go, I was getting, you know, I don't like, I stay away from this game hmm. is Derek King is the type of player who could possibly, I, I don't believe he will, but there's a little bit of a wild card element with him that could score some points that could possibly push the over and could possibly pull off an upset. I don't think it happens, but that's to me the unknown. I want to see one more game with Derek King before I decide to be that confident. I think Clemson's the right side. I think the under's the right side. Just Derek King. We have, I don't know if we've seen like this full Derek King experience yet. I mean, we don't even get it, but he's shown flashes of it and he did it at Houston. We haven't seen it fully with Miami yet. It's the only thing that makes me a little bit nervous about this game. I just wanted to go back, Chip, to the point you were talking about that you brought up to me about how Dabo approaches these games. Because I did go back and look at the trends for Clemson in the playoff era, which is when I think the Clemson Death Star, you know, really reached its full functionality. In uh, 14 games against ranked teams that were played on campuses, not like the neutral site whatever games or the conference championship games, but in 14 regular season games against ranked teams, the under is 9-5 in Clemson's 14 games. 